Hey guys, it's Max. Today we are going to be comparing a custom pre-built Bison V3000 workstation computer against an iMac Pro. Now a lot of people comment and ask me what PC would I recommend that they could buy all set up to something that's ready to go for video editing and I honestly have a really hard time recommending anything. That's because a lot of pre-built systems out there are really designed for basically just to be cheap or to be a gaming machine. So you have cases that are really cheesy looking and the worst part of all is that a lot of them have really lackluster warranties. If you're going to spend the money on a pre-configured computer build, it better have a good warranty to back up the system. I think that is very important. And that's where Bison Tech comes in. So I want to give a huge thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Um, they have, with every computer that they sell, a limited three-year warranty with support and one year for parts. And then you can also extend that, just like you can with an iMac, to up to five years limited warranty. So that definitely is impressive. Um, I just want to stop and comment. Uh, this case is super nice. Oh my goodness, this is um, all aluminum over here on the front and the back. This is not plastic. And the sides are tempered glass. So it looks like we have some packing material in here to make sure all your components are properly set up. Check that out, guys. That, that is impressive looking. Um, so along with the warranty, each one of these V3000 computers, they have liquid cooling no matter what you're doing. So there's a couple of benefits. First off, you're not going to have any throttling issues with extended workloads like you do with the iMac Pro if you guys checked out my review on that system. And it's also going to run quieter and more consistent with the fan speeds. And also you can customize all the components to your liking. So all of these systems come with Windows 10 Pro, which is nice. And along with that, you can easily upgrade the system later, which is something that you're going to have a very difficult time in also voiding your warranty with um, an iMac Pro since everything is kind of glued together. So you can upgrade your RAM, upgrade the graphics card, the CPU, add in extra drives, all of that good stuff. So that packing is really solid. And if you guys can see from there, this says RTX 2080 on it. So I'm very excited to benchmark this system. Now I did choose all the components for this build right here. I went through and chose the CPU, the graphics card I wanted, the SSD, and that is so nice to be able to do, get exactly what you need while still having something that's all pre-set up and ready to use. Now another really cool thing is in the box, you have this little uh, pamphlet included. So uh, my system was stress tested and benchmarked by Ruben. And inside of here, you have all your components and your full benchmarking results. Yeah, including noise levels, power consumption, and different performance. And along with that, if you want to maximize your performance, you can actually select the options in the configurator to have them overclock it for you. And they're also stress testing it to make sure that your long-term reliability doesn't suffer. And also with that, you don't have loud fan noise or very high temperatures. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop fanboying over this amazing case. I'm going to go and spend a good chunk of the day benchmarking it and comparing it in terms of video editing to the iMac Pro. I do have a link to Bison Tech in the video description, so go ahead and check them out. All right, guys, so that was a long day, night, and morning of some testing and retesting and dealing with some issues. But before that, I do want to go ahead and talk about the specs of these PCs and the price points, because that definitely matters, along with some higher configurations. So both of these have eight core processors. We both have one terabyte of ultra-fast M.2 SSD storage. Uh, the PC does have an extra two terabytes of a standard drive. The Mac has a Vega 56 with 8 gigs of RAM, and our Bison actually paid extra in my configuration. I sprung for the RTX 2080 graphics card, which is brand new, and you'll see the performance is really, really good. Uh, so that part of it is awesome. With the Bison Tech, you actually get a wide range of graphics cards that you can choose from. With uh, the iMac Pro, you can go with the Vegas for an additional $600. The RTX 2080, it still outperforms it by a good amount. So we have that $1,350 difference, which would be greater if I got a graphics card that was more on par, which I didn't want to do. Uh, but of course, the elephant in the room is the display. We have that 5K display in the iMac Pro, uh, which is P3 color accuracy, and I really like the resolution of it. Uh, with the PC, you're probably not going to get a 5K display, but you do have a good chunk of room uh, in the budget to get a monitor. Um, so you can go with something as low as $350. I was shocked that this LG here, of course, you could go with like an ultra wide 
side. You can go with two monitors that look the same and match up instead of putting something else on the side of an iMac if you like having dual displays. And of course, you can go with an HDR display, which unfortunately the iMac Pro doesn't have, even though like Final Cut supports HDR, uh, but the actual display doesn't. Or of course, if you're gonna get a high-end configuration, you can get a true pro-level display. So this is my custom configuration that I chose with Bison Tech, but of course, if you wanna spend more money and get a much higher end PC, the price difference does start expanding quite a bit. For example, if you wanna go with a 14 core, 64 gigs of RAM, you wanna get the better graphics card here, and maybe like a Quattro in here, we're seeing an over $3,000 price gap. Uh, along with that, I was kinda of surprised Apple allows up to an 18 core. With the thermals performing how they are, I wonder how that 14 or 18 core would actually perform, whereas with the liquid cooling, as you'll see in a second, we have really Really, really low thermals. So now let's get into the juicy performance aspect of it. I do want to point out that my Bison Tech is not overclocked. I wish I overclocked it. I wish I had them do it, but I didn't. Um, so you're looking at non-overclocked numbers, but this thing has a lot of headroom for overclocking with the low temperatures. So let's go ahead and start out with Cinebench R15 CPU test. And here the Bison Tech scores 116 points higher on the CPU without it being overclocked. Moving on to Geekbench 4, we have a higher single core score on the Bison Tech and a lower multi-core score, uh, which is interesting. Now moving into graphics, the only test they could both do the same as OpenCL. Our Vega 56 scores 165,000, which is actually higher than with High Sierra. And the 2080 in the Bison Tech scores 285,000. Now the iMac Pro can use Apple's Metal API, which is now working better than OpenCL in all the tests that I ran. And that scores 167,000. And of course, with our NVIDIA graphics card, we can use CUDA. And this thing scores 408,000 in CUDA. That is a ridiculously high CUDA score. And if you're using a program or effects that really work well with CUDA, this is really gonna help you out. Next, let's jump into Unigen Heaven, which I threw in just for fun, just in case some of you guys, after a long day of work, you wanna go out and do some gaming. Of course, a Windows PC is much more capable and it supports pretty much all the games compared to a Mac. But in terms of actual graphics rendering performance, here we have a score of 1841 on the iMac and 4147 on the custom PC. And finally, let's jump into Premiere Pro and take a look at video editing performance. Now, both of these systems have no issues cutting through standard 4K H.264 or even 4K H.265 8-bit footage at full resolution in the timeline with LUTs and with effects and color corrections and even film grain applied, they have no issues at all. Now, what I did notice is a difference in the CPU and the graphics usage. Since that computer, the custom PC, has a much more powerful GPU you, it's had a lot more headroom available. And then if we go ahead and export this five minute 4K timeline with two lots in film grain applied, we get about a 15% faster speed with the Bison. And then a five minute H.265 timeline with the same effects, we get an 8% improvement in speeds. Now I want to take a look at something much more difficult. If you checked out my Fujifilm X-T3 review, I talked about how difficult those new H.265 10-bit files, especially 4K60, were to edit. They were just killing my system. So this is a perfect time to test it out with these PCs. And playing through a one minute timeline with color corrections, we had 134 dropped frames in that one minute on the iMac Pro and 18 dropped frames on the Bison PC. So none of them do it perfectly smooth, uh, but the Bison does much better and it's almost not noticeable that you're dropping frames. Whereas with my iMac or with my MacBook Pro, you just get killed and you almost aren't able to edit. In fact, I actually had to transcode everything to be able to edit that video. Taking a look at the performance statistics, we had less CPU usage on the Bison and much less graphics usage, actually 50% GPU, where we had 96% GPU usage on the iMac Pro. So that was a graphics bottleneck that we were experiencing. Now rendering a five minute timeline of this footage that's color corrected, we see a 12% faster speed with the Bison Tech if we're rendering to H.265 and a massive 27% faster speeds when rendering to H.264. Now this is mainly because of thermal throttling where the Bison Tech through this export, we're seeing 64 degrees Celsius on the CPU and the iMac is thermal throttling at 94 degrees Celsius going all the way down to like a 3.3, 3.4 uh, gigahertz on the processor. And this is where I really wish Apple would implement liquid cooling. They're really notorious for thermal throttling and uh, not having enough thermal capacity uh, for the fans to actually be able to take all the heat and get it out. And they rather just thermal throttle it. Uh, so that is definitely a big win. And of course, if you 
overclock the system, you have all that thermal headroom to be able to uh, dissipate that heat or also if you go with like a 14 or an 18 core processor. Next, I stabilized the 20 second 4K clip and the iMac Pro is actually 13 seconds faster. Now that's not really much to be said because both systems took almost five minutes to stabilize. It's not a problem with these systems. These systems are fantastic, but Premiere is not using very much of the CPU and almost none of the GPU. Please make use of this GPU. Everybody else makes use of the GPU. This could be done so, so much quicker. I was really hoping Adobe would have fixed this in this brand new release of Premiere Pro and they haven't. Please Adobe, please fix this. Don't add any more features. <laughs> fix the stabilization. All right, so now let's jump to the big boy codecs. First, we're gonna talk about 8K Red Raw and then about Canon Cinema Raw Lite. So starting with that 8K Raw, both of them can do a fairly surprisingly good job uh, editing in an 8K timeline at half resolution. Uh, both of them do drop frames, but it's not horrible. The iMac Pro actually dropped 256 frames in a one minute timeline, where our PC dropped 41 frames in that timeline. Uh, so we are getting better performance, probably because of that graphics card, since the CPUs are so similar. So next, I exported a five minute timeline and the Bison Tech was about 25% faster. Now, not only that, once again, looking at the actual temperatures and the thermals, um, the CPU here was at a low 58 degrees Celsius where our Mac CPU, it was really thermal throttling here. So there's your kind of thermal performance difference. And now to finish this all off, this is 4K 60 footage Canon Cinema Raw Lite from the C200. Even though it's 4K, it is so much more difficult to work with than red footage. So neither of these machines can play that back in full resolution with uh, color corrections. They really struggle. You could drop it down to half and then you are able to kind of edit, but you're still dropping frames. The Mac is smoother and it does drop less frames in a one minute 60 frames per second timeline. And we've seen this in the past. This has something to do with either Mac OS or maybe the Metal API where it works better with the C200 footage than you can do with a Windows PC. I did export a five minute timeline here and the performance was actually so close. It was almost identical, but it did take much, much longer than with the red footage. So with all of that said, I'm quite impressed with this computer right here. Of course, I chose the components myself and I sprung for that RTX 2080, which is fantastic. It has great CUDA core performance, but along with that, I'm impressed with Bison Tech. They are great to deal with and great to communicate with. Along with that, I'm very impressed with that case. That thing is awesome. It looks fantastic and the thermal performance, especially with that liquid cooling is really, really good. I would definitely spring for the overclocking. They're gonna make sure it's gonna be uh, overclocked the proper amount, not too much. We're gonna have a little reliability issues. It's gonna, they're gonna make sure it's all stable and give you kind of the benchmarking sheet with all the thermals and all the stress tests and stuff like that. And along with that, if you're gonna go for like a 14 or 18 core CPU, you're gonna know that you're not gonna have any thermal issues. It's gonna perform great. Where I would love to test one of those high end 14 or 18 core uh, iMac Pros and see how much that thing throttles. If the eight core is throttling already, you know, if you buy a 14, do you get more like a 10 core performance in reality because of throttling? So that is definitely, definitely interesting. So if you're looking to get a PC where you can choose the right components for video editing, you can make sure you're not gonna have an issue with thermals, with fan noise, you want something that looks high quality, doesn't look cheesy, like some gaming PC that might use cheap components as well. Um, I would definitely check out Bison Tech. I have a link in the video description and that will also give you $100 off with the coupon code. And you can set up the configuration you need, get something in, it's all ready to go to plug in and go ahead and start video editing, creating content, and whatever else you do. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys are subscribed, that you guys have those notifications enabled. I have a lot of great videos coming up that you guys do not want to miss, so make sure that notification bell is on. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.